This show is brought to you by our friends at bayphoto.com. Head over after the show to print something amazing. Be sure to check out their specials at bayphoto.com forward slash specials. Let's dive over to looking at your guys stuff here and the first photograph i don't even need to be told whose this is <laughs> i know that's sue and yep our good friend sue from sun valley idaho yeah so sue you know i'm a big fan um it's interesting but there's the you know the dog is looking the other way I'm, you know, I'm going to be straightforward. I don't have that. I don't have an emotional connection to it. It's it's like a photograph of part of a story. And that's that kind of linking or transitional photograph that Dan Milner calls it. You know, there's basically three types of photographs that that I'm aware of. OK, you know, we can kind of break things into three categories. One is just showing what happened okay a photograph of something and you know you could call that a um a snapshot is one way of terming it or a, a kind of a uh you're just reproducing what you saw in front of you and that's exactly where photography originally started out the second type of photograph and there's nothing wrong with that because a lot of times we want to just record what we saw. The second type is it fits into a bigger story and that we call a linking photograph or a transitional photograph. And that's what I see here. This is part of maybe the next photograph. We see another dog running towards it or it runs towards a deer or something. There's some other part to this story. And then kind of the one that we're always after is that one that is a standalone photograph with emotional impact. So this tells me a part of a story, I'm kind of waiting for the rest of it, which is fine, you know, as long as you do tell me the rest of the story. Okay, who's next? All right, we've got this one from Christy. Uh, and she calls this, you know, she commented layers and that this was taken in Prescott, Arizona. You know, we're always going to have our eyes drawn to warm, uh, warm tones here. You know, a sunset. That's what a sunset is. It's warm because the sun is on a lower angle. I mean, it's interesting, the physics of it sun is straight overhead you're going to get very blue light and as it deflects through the atmosphere you're getting that warm light okay so this is a photograph that has the scene set but there's no center point of interest for me there's no point for my eye to land and go whoa that's really important in a photograph it's important in writing as well it's kind of important in every form of art is to have a center of interest that you're going towards, your eye is drawn towards, or your ear is drawn towards. So Christy, you've set the stage. Now something needs to happen within it. Um, you know, a bird flying across it would, would give it that little punch, that little bit of a punctuation point that could draw your eye to that and you go, well, there's the story. This bird is flying in sunset. It's a half story for me. It's like, okay, the sun's going down. Like that's the sentence. The sun is going down and it's beautiful. What's the rest of the sentence? This bird flew across that really got my attention. There's the other half of the sentence we want to see. Okay. So, you know, how do you how do you fill the rest of the sentence? You wait and sometimes you have it and sometimes you don't just wait. What shows up? Maybe an animal in the foreground shows up. Maybe a bird shows up. Maybe you walk into the frame. Don't forget, you can always do that. Always take a tripod with you 
walk into the frame. You can be your own subject, your own punctuation point. And that actually is very effective and there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, there's everything right about it. But give us the rest of the sentence. Okay, who's next? All right, um, let's take a look at a series uh -huh. um, that uh, Bhargav did. So try documentary style photography for my visit to uh, Charmindar in, uh, in the city last week. Relevant feedback is appreciated. Story. It is the closing time of the Charmindar where market people are laid back, wrapping their equipment, going back to their places. Of course, last minute vendors like me to enjoy the place. Technique. I tried to use some moderate long exposure to capture that feel of rush. I thought black and white was appropriate as there was no interesting information in the color and then uh, the camera information. So can so we view those separately? Photos. Yep. Oh, there good. Okay. Go. All right, cool. Uh, you want me to just cycle through them until you see yeah. or you want to just comment each one? Well, uh, so just just, kind of yeah. Through. Okay. Oh. Good. Go ahead. And this was shot on film, right? Uh, let's film? see. It was shot with... Sony Alpha. No. Okay. A. Yeah, that's fine. It's digital. Yeah. Okay, go back to the first one. No, the first one. Sure. Back, back. There you go. Okay. That's a cool photograph. And I'll, you know, these form a story because there's a series. But the, um, what I like about it is we're just seeing a piece of humanity here. We're seeing a slice and but you know, there's a punctuation point with that light burst, draws your eye to it. You've got, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And as we go through the photographs, let's go to the next one. In black and white, I agree. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'd probably take that out of the series, but you know, this is part of your editing process. Uh, I feel like we've already seen the starburst. We don't necessarily need that one, but that's cool. What, what's next? Yeah, this is very different, see? There is a starburst, but there's a feeling. What I like about this is a feeling of, wow, there's a lot of motion here on the right. Is that what we're looking at, that blurriness? Yeah, he did say he put long exposure. Yeah, it's a really long time, exposure. He which wanted is, to get that feeling of movement and people kind of wrapping up and moving around. And the, the thing is, this is one of those examples of a kind of a timelessness. This could be an old, really old photograph from uh, 70 years ago or 100 years ago. <clears throat> okay, good. Let's see what else on that one. Uh, okay, so different, same place, different. Okay, different, you know. I think just light, waiting a few minutes. Yeah. Waiting, stuff, stuff's moving around. And yeah, okay. So, you know, good on your your you're putting a photo story together and you're connecting them together. You know, the editing process here, gosh, there's a lot of noise. Go back to that one. Clean up oh, that yeah. noise. If you're going to leave it there. Yeah. Uh, just clean it up just because, I mean, it's really noisy, but it, you know, that's because you're using a high ISO, but you can clean that up. Be my advice. Noise isn't like grain that, has some beauty to it okay cool all right so good on your your story you know you're yep. telling you're linking them together and you can put it together with uh you know your text and you've got a little mini story there which is good awesome okay all who, right who else have we got our next photo this is from and by the way you guys in the chat uh, uh be sure to put your notes in here, feedback. Mark, I do not agree with what you just said. How what, how dare you? I don't care, you know, just, I'd love to have this be a two-way communication. This I saw before when we we're getting set up, and I think this is a really cool photograph. Who Whose is this? This is uh, Zobayar, uh, and it's Argentina fans react while watching the FIFA World Cup match in Dhaka, uh, Bangladesh. Oh, they're 
that's that's why it just kind of threw me off. Like, why are they wearing Argentine colors? Yep. You know, so that was Argentine a, fans in Bangladesh. That was an unbelievable game. I don't know how many of you saw it. Sunday morning here, uh, 7 a.m. California time. We all got up and just because we have a lot of friends from Argentina. And, you know, Argentina won the World Cup for the first time ever. But look at that. Look at these expressions. Now, this has got a lot of emotion in it. Talk, we were talking about emotional impact. Look at all the various emotions. The guy on the right, almost like anxiety. This guy, you know, with the big buggy eyes kind mm -hmm. of in the middle here. Like, whoa, what's going on? The guy, you, you could pick a whole range of emotions from this one photograph. It's very cool. And you're getting this this viewpoint of the audience. Very cool and very smart to turn around and, and get their expressions. And it reminds me of uh, a painting, actually. I feel like this could easily be a painting. The guy on the right is what really makes it, you know, with his expression like this. Yeah. And that angle. See, that kind of draws your eye back into the frame. Really important, you guys, to remember, you don't want to have things that are pulling your eye out of the frame. This works really well because it actually, almost like a leading line, draws your attention right to his face. He's the star of this photograph. He really is. He's the one that makes that photograph really work. So that's good. You know, and it's a good example of even though you've got a lot of different faces there, you still, it's really important to have your eye be able to go to one primary point, which is this guy freaking out. And then you kind of travel around from there. Just that, that, that's such a key point in your telling a story. Have that main point of interest and then look around the rest of the frame. And you've done a really good job with that. Yeah. So bravo. Okay. And uh, once again, it goes with that principle of what you've talked about, where it's, um, you know, you got to wait for that right moment because if this guy, yeah. you know, if his hand, if his arm wasn't up, this photo, like you said, wouldn't be Would you nearly be as complete. This is what makes it complete. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.